Let's talk about building a watch list. That is one of the questions that I get all the time. And you're sitting there probably if you're brand new wondering like, how do I take all these disparate stocks in the market and put them together? Well, watch this video. I'm going to show you step by step how to put together a comprehensive watch list that will work in all market conditions that you can actually act upon. So before we even get to that point, let me just tell you what most people do. They hop in somebody's chat room, they read some blogs, they get on the tweeter, and right, they're like, okay, these are the hot ideas. That's usually never the way, right? Once somebody posts about something, once something shows up on some random scanner as a mover, you've already missed most of it, right? So you gotta be really careful with that. But also, that strategy, your watch list will have no flow to it. There'll be no coherence to it, where there's like an actual strategy that fits what you're trying to do. It's just gonna have random tickers that have moved with no real rhyme or reason to your particular style. So, I personally, when I trade, I use a software called TC2000 and I go through a fairly comprehensive routine, but it doesn't take a long time, right? It will take a long time when you are brand new because you can't sift through stocks probably as fast as I can. But the cool thing on TC2000, like if you look here, like I just hit space bar, space bar, space bar, you can flip through stocks like literally in one second. And so what happens is when you train your brain to see certain patterns that you personally trade, not what everybody else trades, but you personally trade, then you're going to be able to easily identify names very, very quickly, stick them on a list, and then you can fine tune them later, right? And so that's you know part of kind of how I do things. So first things first, right? I open up this bad boy TC2000. I have a layout here that I call my main layout. All right, so you can see on this bad boy, I've got the daily chart on the left side, my five minute chart on the right side. Now, when you are scanning for stocks, you don't ever put stocks on your watch list because they had a hot five minute or one minute chart from the previous day or that day if you're doing it, your uh, watch list at night, okay? We get our ideas from the big picture, the daily chart. So no matter how the stock closed or what kind of zigzags it was showing on your intraday chart, the market is closed. That has no meaning for the next day in terms of how you build out your watch list, all right? I see people do this all the time. They're like, wow, this, there's a flag on the five minute and I'm like, the market's closed. <laughs> that doesn't really matter. You know, we want to look on the big picture for our ideas. And on that big picture, we're searching for a handful of things. Number one, price patterns. All right. So think about the price patterns you trade personally. This is what I look for on the big picture. Now, I have a more diverse skill set than most traders just because, well, frankly, I'm old. Right? Like I've been trading since 2008. So I have expertise in thousands and thousands of repetitions and, you know, a dozen different patterns where you're not going to have that. So think about what you personally trade. That's what you're focusing on. So let's talk about how I do this. So I got my right main watch list up. So the first scan I run every single day is a liquid gainer scan. So this scan is essentially looking for momentum with expanding volume and what we call our vol, right? Which is an expansion in volume that's high on a relative basis compared to its normal. So like if a stock does 5 million shares a day, now it's doing 10 million, you know, so on and so forth. So going back to this, as I'm flipping through this liquid gainer scan, I'm just hitting space bar to go through this. I'm looking for a handful of things. Number one, does that daily chart show any patterns that I personally like to trade? So I personally like to trade on the daily chart a handful of things. Number one, I look for flat top breakouts. So you can see here, this is kind of like a, just a base example of flat top breakout. Very, very simple. 
Three tests of resistance, 90 MA curls under, and then a breakout. Second pattern I look for is a flag breakout, which is just a short momentum thrust, and then three to 10 day consolidation, and then a breakthrough. Beyond that, I look for base breakouts, which is like a setup that we're seeing a lot right now on. Stocks that are down 75% or more off its highs. You have a multi-month base near lows. Usually these are going to be in the single digits or you know in the 10 to $20 range because they've been really beaten down. And then they're coming out of that base. Your MAs are starting to flow up and it's starting to break out of a lid. And now we could have maybe a new trend starting to form. Beyond that, I'm looking for an assortment of pullback moves, stocks that are pulling back into the 9 EMA, the 50 SMA, the 200 SMA, or stocks that are having three-day pullbacks into price support. So these are different variations of pullbacks that I teach in my 60-day trading bootcamp, which is live training where I teach people from A to Z all of this stuff, but in big, big detail, day in and day out, my students are with me. We trade together in the mornings, and then I teach class at night. So it's kind of a immersive university style setting for anybody that wants to learn how to trade. So if you wanna just watch some DVDs and do something quick, this is not the class for you. So those are the patterns that I'm looking for. The other thing that I look for on this liquid gainer scan is just stocks that have big momentum things that are starting to trend. So maybe they've already broken out of a pattern, but they're starting to trend and you can trade those kind of stocks on a daily basis. Usually when a stock comes out of a pattern, you can trade it for, I'd say three to six days before it gets too extended and then it's got to pull back and then you got to look for it again on a retracement and then start trading it again after it pulls back. You don't ever want to buy stocks if it shows up on a scan and day trade it if you're on day six, day seven, day eights of moves. You know, if you look at a, a chart like a UAL recently or an AAL, you know, when they get into that day, you know, six, seven, eight, nines, they tend to kind of collapse really, really quickly. If you look at a, a, a stock that we were shorting the other day, Mara, you can see this thing had like this huge seven, eight day move and then boom, right, the next day down 20%. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna get stocks as they're starting to move. So the first thing I'm doing is running my liquid gainer scan. Next thing I do is run a top loser scan. Top loser scan is essentially looking for stocks that have broken down on the downside with some level of momentum, some increasing in volume, and then an assortment of things that I like to use for ATR, which means average to range, and a couple other things. So as I'm going through this, you can just hit the flag button on TC2000, very easy. It'll put it on the left side of my TC2000. You can see I got a watch list here called flagged, and I'm starting to build out my names. Beyond that, I've got a list of go-to stocks. These are 200 names that I've traded frequently over the last 12 months. They're often just stocks that are like well-known, that are trending, and that they have big range and volume. So stocks like Tesla, Nvidia, these are names that I always have on my watch list because they tend to move in big, big ranges like Tesla moves. If you look at the ATR of Tesla, it's got a $10 ATR, meaning it moves on average $10 per day. That's a really, really good range to trade back and forth. There's a handful of names out there in the market that do that. So we want to always have those on the watch list because if you're trading stocks with low ATR, that means low average true range, and you're using, say, momentum or trend techniques, and they have low ATR, then you're not really matching the technique with the stock. You're only as good as the stocks you trade. So you have to marry the type of style you're doing with also the type of stocks. If you're a momentum trader like myself and that stock is incapable of momentum, then you're really not gonna get good results and so you gotta be careful with that. So I go through this go-to stock list. After all of this, you know, I will take a cursory glance at the market indexes. I've got a daily tab here with a whole host of indexes. I'll go through the QQQs, the SPIs, the IWM to see if the indexes are kind of matching what 
information I've gathered from the scans, you know, and see if they're actually marrying a lot. And I want to do that so that I don't have a bias on the market. So I like to go through the individual stocks first to get a pulse on the market, to see like how the individual names are actually behaving. Because sometimes you can look at the market index and it'll look down and you'd be like, wow, the market stinks. But then all the individual stocks actually look really, really good. Why is that? These indexes are mostly weighted by Apple and Google and Microsoft for the most part anyways. So like if those are down, then the indexes will look like crap, but maybe everything else is looking pretty good. So you gotta be careful weighing too much into the indexes. So I look at the stocks, then I look at the indexes, and now I'm putting together my watch list. Now, once I've got this flag symbol, I'll probably have a decent amount of names. I'll go back through that flag symbol list and really kind of cut out the stuff that I know is probably not going to be like an A plus opportunity or even a B plus opportunity. So I want to cut out the ones that have, you know, maybe not the volume profile that I'm good at trading. I typically like my best trades are in stocks that do more than 10 million shares a day in volume. At least it was for 2021 and 2022. So I want to, you know, kind of take off some of the lower volume ones. Uh, if a stock had a great pattern, but maybe it's got low ATR, then that's probably a stock that I would do a swing trade in because I know it's a great pattern and it can get where I need to go, but it could take you know five days, 10 days, but it may not give you that range that might be able to sashay in and out in day trade. So you know I'll trade that out of another account. You could do it from your IRA or one of your longer term accounts because it does have a great pattern and maybe it's really low risk and high reward but it's just gonna take a little bit, right? Some stocks are just grinders and they get where they need to go, but they may not get there like in like 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Now the caveat of those stocks that get there in 15, 20 minutes is they often will spike and fake back down and spike and fake back down. That's why they make great day traders, but when you're holding them overnight, boy, it gives you a lot of heartburn. So I like to hold stocks overnight that, right? Don't give me those fugazis and don't give me all that heartburn, right? I want those smooth gliders. You know, that makes me feel a little bit more comfortable holding them overnight. I'll trade the wild ones when I'm day trading. So that's my night watch list. Now in the mornings, when I turn on my TC2000, a pop-up comes on that says pre-market watch list. So what I want to start doing is that's going to show you all the stocks that are gapping up. Stocks that are actually moving up in the pre-market. Now, what I want to do is look for stocks that are moving up minimum 3% on 100,000 shares in volume. And that's going to help me narrow down all the stocks that are moving in the pre-market to a little bit more of a condensed list. All right. And then now I start flipping through these, looking for stocks that have some type of news out that is going to be breaking a level on the daily chart that is going to be showing some type of pattern for continuation.